all day long, focus of growing fear. The 40-year-old nuclear plant damaged by the earthquake, its power knocked out. A crucial cooling system disabled with pressure building inside the reactor. Japan declared a state of emergency at the plant, its first ever, and Chris Cuomo is here with that, Chris. We're getting updates right now, Diane, as we're broadcasting. The situation is still far from under control. We're hearing radiation levels inside the plant reached as high as 1,000 times the normal level. So what started as a natural disaster has the potential to become an even more threatening man-made disaster. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is one of the largest and oldest nuclear power plants in the world. And now it is in great jeopardy. The immediate crisis period is right now extending uh, over the next uh, five to six hours. But it takes at least two days to cool a reactor down completely. Nuclear plants use the energy from highly radioactive uranium to make electricity. Uranium normally operates at 3,400 degrees. To keep it from getting any hotter, pumps circulate water to cool the uranium core. The problem is, the earthquake and the tsunami combined as a one-two punch. Experts believe knocking out the primary and backup water pumps. If there's no water, Water, there's no cooling. Pressure builds, which could trigger a release of radioactive steam into the environment. If the water level drops enough, the uranium core is exposed and temperatures can rise quickly to 5,000 degrees, causing a meltdown. They're not being designed to withstand the worst case accidents. They're only being built to withstand the most likely. If you do that, eventually you're going to hit a worst case. And that's what happened today. Please stay inside with your doors and windows closed. The only nuclear accident in U.S. history happened in 1979 at Three Mile Island. A one-two punch was again to blame. A broken valve released some radioactive steam, and workers at the plant failed to shut down quickly enough. The core melted down, the most dangerous kind of nuclear accident. Thankfully, tragedy was avoided because the containment walls remained intact. No significant amount of radioactivity was released from the Three Mile Island plant. The impact on uh, the local population was essentially zero. And that was the best case scenario. We do know that right now people are on scene at the plant. They have backup power, Diane, but they haven't reconnected it yet. And now we're hearing they may release some radioactive steam to reduce the pressure there. They say they're going to filter out the radiation, but experts say that's very difficult to do. And of course, it depends which way the wind is blowing, yes. where it hits. But Chris was saying this is still a serious situation. And all day long, physicist Michio Kaku has been following the situation with us. So, Dr. Kaku, at this hour, what do you think of how long it is taking to get those generators back up? This is unusual, the first time in history. And remember, the Japanese reactors are the safest in the world, but they were never designed to handle an 8.9 earthquake, 7.0, 7.5, but not 8.9. And you were showing me the reactor water, the cooling water is supposed to be about this high above the core, uh, giving it some perspective here. And what happens when it backs up? How quickly does it burn off? Well, when the water levels began to drop and expose the red hot core of uranium, it hits 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, within 30 minutes, you can start to get a core meltdown. Now, what's preventing that is the emergency core cooling system, the backup system. But the backup systems are failing. Power went out in the backup system. This is what normally happens. In a nuclear accident, immediately, the generators kick in, pour cooling water over the damaged core. Right now, we're desperately trying to put generators on site. 14 generators have now arrived. They're testing them, they're inserting them, but it's a race against time. Because if a secondary earthquake hits, the accident could go to a whole new level. And you were telling me earlier that it's not just one bottle of water they need. They have to keep coming because it burns off and evaporates. That's and I right. know you'll be standing by with us throughout the rest of the evening. Thank you, Dr. Kaku.